extraordinary events causing great loss of life, damage, or hardship, like a flood, a tornado, an airplane crash, or an earthquake. Awesome reminders of the terrible power of nature and grim lessons in mankind's capacity for destruction. In desperate hours, you'll be an eyewitness to some of the greatest disasters of the last 100 years. In this episode, we contemplate from a safe distance the lethal majesty of volcanoes, one of the planet's most destructive as well as spectacular natural forces. It is estimated there are up to 4,000 volcanoes on Earth, of which annually about 50 are active volcanoes above sea level, emitting in their eruptions millions of tons of dust, ash, and gases, and endangering the lives and property of millions of people. Montserrat, an emerald island in the Caribbean Sea, described by tourist guidebooks as late as the 1990s as a tropical paradise. The beauty of Montserrat must have enchanted voyagers already in 1493, when it was discovered by Christopher Columbus. It was the volcano that changed the tropical paradise into hell on Earth. although geologists believed that the Sufria Hills volcano was inactive. On 18 July 1995, after four quiet centuries, this sleeping giant suddenly awoke. The subsequent huge eruption spewed out large volumes of pyroclastic material over a radius of 15 kilometers. The following apocalypse especially hit the capital city of Plymouth, which will never forget this day. Plymouth was buried in several meters of mud and ash. The day changed into night. The quiet atmosphere of a town carelessly bathing in the sun just a while beforehand suddenly changed into the worst nightmare. Look up, and what I saw, I left the cabin running. I ran away from the mountain coming down. The point on which I decide to leave the island is after I've been, been over in the hills and see the last Paraclastic flow that make me move. Two thirds of the population had to be evacuated, hastily leaving their homes, which most of them never returned to. I was living in the buffer zone, right? The, um, the zone which they would move next if activity from the volcano increases and right now they have evacuated that zone. Well, now I don't know what they're going to do now because they evacuated where I lived, where my mom lived, in the part in the north where they evacuated still. Because of the volcano, the number of Montserrat inhabitants fell from 12,000 to 4,500 people. However, none of the people who refused to leave their beloved Caribbean island knew that the fury of the volcano was not over. Almost two years later, on 15 June 1997, a new explosion shook the volcano with a subsequent outburst of magma. Flows of lava literally ate into the hill on its way. And again, a massive mud flow covered the capital Plymouth and surrounding villages. Frightened people watched 
as lava flowing down the volcano slopes flattened villages and burned houses. On that day, Sufria Hills claimed 19 lives, burning them alive in hot lava. At the time of the disaster, the victims were in the forbidden area where they had fields and homes which they refused to leave. They took the risk and were unlucky, which cost them their lives. Further eruptions reinforced the flows of hot lava, which gradually buried the lively town of Plymouth on the shore. The formerly vibrant and easygoing town now witnessed apocalyptic scenes of destroyed streets covered in endless gray. Although volcanic eruptions still occasionally occur, the inhabitants of the island hope that the worst is over. Iceland is known as the land of ice and fire. The icy white landscape evokes a sense of purity and innocence. As if from time to time, it had to be stained with ash coming from volcanic eruptions. In the territory of Iceland, there are 30 active volcanic systems. Iceland is located at the top of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, where two different tectonic plates meet. This contributes to the very intense volcanic and seismic activity in Iceland, which is not to be found anywhere else on Earth. The eruption of 1973, which took place on Hime Island, is believed to be one of the world's worst natural disasters of the 20th century. On 21 January 1973, around 8 p.m., the island was shaken by several small, almost imperceptible shocks. Despite this, nobody expected a catastrophe, the extent of which was to come. Does this volcano come as a complete surprise to you, or did you have any warning? There was no warning whatsoever until 10 o'clock yesterday evening, uh, which was the earthquake. Yeah. Yes. Uh, how much danger do you think this uh, eruption represents to the country, the island and its livelihood? It's quite difficult to say. It uh, depends on the volume of lava produced and on wind direction. So there's a possibility that it won't be very dangerous? It's quite, yes, I, I think so, actually. At 2 a.m. on 23 January 1973, a new crack appeared in the eastern side of the volcano Eldfell, whose name means Mountain of Fire in Icelandic. It was less than a kilometer away from the center of Hime City, whose citizens were caught absolutely unprepared. Red-hot lava started to flow from the crack at appalling speed. Volcanic dust fell on the roofs of houses. 
the frightened citizens of the island were woken by police sirens and evacuated to safety off the island. They were lucky. They were all successfully evacuated in time. As there had been a strong storm around the island the previous day, most of the fishing boats had stayed in the harbor. They were used to save lives. Older and helpless people were transported by air, others on the boats. They watched as streams of lava flowed through the streets of their town destroying their houses and property, ruining their lives. The catastrophe changed the lives of all 5,000 inhabitants of the island forever. Many have never returned for fear of further eruptions, and others have had to start life again from scratch. Recently, we were again reminded of the power and presence of Icelandic volcanoes. The volcanic eruption of Eyjafjallajökull in 2010 resulted in a vast volcanic ash cloud, which blocked air travel throughout Europe. Today, most of the UK remains covered by the ash cloud. Eruption uh, it may stop tomorrow, but it may continue to disrupt air traffic for weeks or months. We don't know anything. We don't know how to get home. We don't know how to get any information uh, about what to do. And we don't have anywhere to stay. The explosive activity might drop down for a period of time, but then we will have uh, over a, maybe an extensive period of time, months to even years, uh, intermittent explosive eruptions. Iberia put us up for a few nights and gave us food put us on today's flight, today's flight's cancelled, and now they say they're not gonna give us any more accommodation or any food. It was not a strong eruption, but according to seismologists, another eruption of similar scope is just a matter of time. Volcanic eruptions have always fascinated and terrified people. These natural giant fireworks emit streams of bubbling, boiling lava, traveling at speeds of up to 165 meters per second. As the lava spreads out in a breathtaking show, it can cause destruction, death, and doom. This flaming, bubbling hell turns into vast streams a lethal mixture of volcanic ash, solid lava, mud, and water, which sweeps down the mountain slopes like an unstoppable river. How and where are volcanoes born? They begin life at a depth of between 80 to 220 kilometers below the Earth's surface, in a place known as the asthenosphere. The asthenosphere is actually a viscous mantle of the Earth, which allows for the movement of the Earth's lithospheric plates. Without the asthenosphere, the plates would not be able to move and the renewal of the Earth's crust would not be possible. Where the plates touch each other, slide past one another, move under or over one another. This is where the Earth's crust is so broken that magma can find its way up to the surface. This is how a volcanic crater develops.
Indonesia has been seen as symbolic of volcanic disasters ever since the eruption of the legendary Krakatoa volcano in 1883. This land, like Iceland, is referred to as the land of volcanoes and lies in the Sunda Strait, where there is frequent Strombolian activity. Every now and then, some of them erupt, causing a local disaster. The same applies to Merapi Volcano, literally meaning Fire Mountain in the local language, is arguably Indonesia's most dangerous volcano with a history of deadly eruptions. The volcano is frequently active with eruptive episodes occurring every few years, posing a threat to more than one million people living on the slopes of the volcano. This type of activity has occurred frequently in past years, usually lasting for a few weeks or months each time. On 26 October 2010, Merapi violently erupted, spewing flows of hot rock and gas kilometers away from the summit and devastating the surrounding area. The huge explosion caused a collapse of its lava dome and red hot clouds of ash rolled down the slopes of the mountains, burning everything that stood in their way. They devastated tens of villages and all the fertile fields on the slopes. Further explosions continued daily for approximately two weeks before activity started to decrease in the middle of November. Like in 94, it was the dome collapse and the seismicity and also the deformation, there was no signal. At the peak of activity on November 5, pyroclastic flows traveled 16 kilometers from the summit, destroying everything in their path. During the 2010 eruptive episode, more than 300 people were killed, making this most recent eruption the greatest volcanic disaster at Merapi in 80 years. Over 300,000 people were evacuated from their homes within a 20 kilometer radius of the volcano and moved to temporary shelters in safer areas away from the fiery reaches of the volcano. Saya ke sini karena kena abu dari Merapi itu. Lantas saya menjadi sesak nafas dan pusing. Ya dari apa? Lampung dari Merapi ini ada debu. Terus ya ada riwayat tekanan darah tinggi juga ya. Pengembalian psikisnya yang sekali menjaga. Takutnya ada yang trauma, yang ngedrop. Target kita di sini anak-anak sama manula. Thanks to the detailed geological monitoring and timely warnings by the Indonesian Center of Volcanology and the resulting rapid evacuations, it is estimated that 10 to 20,000 lives were saved. All time that Merapi keeps two different, two different uh, activity. One eruption, explosion, and one storm collapse. Both are dangerous. So what does the future hold for Merapi and the people living on its hazardous slopes? 
scientists face a challenge to unravel the driving forces behind Merapi's activity. Past eruptions hold the key to future eruptive styles, so unlocking the secrets of what lies behind Merapi's activity will help volcanologists to prevent further catastrophes occurring. The devastating explosions accompanying volcanic eruptions can completely destroy prosperous ecosystems and whole civilizations. One such volcano is Mount Nyirangongo, elevation 3,470 meters in war-torn Congo, whose last eruption occurred in January 2002. In that eruption, Lava appeared on the surface directly at the edge of Goma City in Minigi, where it started to flow out of the earth and cut the city in two. Many people had no place to flee and suffocated. Lava streams got as far as Lake Kivu, The number of victims reached about a hundred. Thousands of people lost their homes. Everything, they've lost everything, even for those houses of which they're still standing, but they've, they've lost the roof, the rooftops, and they've lost their, they've lost their belongings, yes. They've lost everything. My house is still down. Now I don't know what I can do. Now I don't know why my family was going. Now I try to see some way if I can find to him. Niragongo is one of the most active volcanoes on Earth. It is unique for its lava crater lake and highly liquid lava which you cannot escape from. Experts warn that if Niragongo shows its true power, Goma City, with its one million inhabitants, will become a contemporary Pompeii. Another threat with potentially inconceivable consequences is Yellowstone National Park in the USA. The national park is located on a supervolcano. Yellowstone is the supervolcano's caldera, under which there is the largest magma chamber in the world. It's never possible to predict a volcano, to say the volcano will erupt in three years or in 25 years. We cannot tell the future. We can only monitor the present. Queste aree eh, possono dare origine come massime eruzioni alle uniche eruzioni che possono avere effetti catastrofici globali, al pari di grandi impatti meteoritici. According to scientists, the likelihood of the supervolcano erupting is five to ten times higher than the likelihood of Earth being hit by an asteroid. We can only hope that neither we nor our descendants will experience the eruption of the supervolcano, which would bring death to hundreds of thousands of people and horrible consequences to cope with for millions of people, not only in America, but worldwide. These are volcanoes, time bombs, where it is actually just a question of time before an eruption of devastating extent will occur. And what's more, we know well that man cannot fight against nature, but must learn to live with it.